Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we're back, and it is September the 28th. And I have a question for all of you listening. How do you think big in a world that wants to keep you small? Well, we're going to hopefully answer that question for you today when you listen to part three. And we're going over points six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. We'll, six, seven, we'll see eight. see if we get through all I was going to say, right? Julie, that's we'll a lot of points. see how much we have to say about each of them. Yeah. You know. Right, see if you just get on, get on some soapbox about something, start if ranting. I get into some ranters, yeah, exactly, <laughs> where you're like, when will it end? You know, <laughs> something like that. Hey. Oh, I would rather have more that we can do than, you know. I My rants short. have been um, acknowledged. You, you have rants? <laughs> my yeah. rants were acknowledged by Brad Inman as being the best rants in real estate a couple of years ago. Well, That's so, true. So don't, don't minimize the power of a good I'm rant. Not. No worries. <laughs> so it is Tuesday, yes, and it is indeed part three of this series, How to Think Big in a World that Wants to Keep You Small, so we'll jump into that in a second. I've been excited to see some of the updates that we're doing from Premier Coaching and some changes that we're making, and uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, it's been uh, very uh, mentally consuming, I have to say, <laughs> a lot That's of work. True. I mean, Premier Coaching isn't just a coach. You don't just get a coach yeah. and then you're off to the races. Premier Coaching is a complete system. And there's an absolute ton of content that you get. It's the things we talk about a lot, but there's a lot of other things we don't mention that are uh, essentially the glue that keeps everything together. You know, we talk about the scripts and the presentations and all the rest of it, but there's a luxury section. There's a section on distressed real estate. There's a section on on new construction. There's a 12-month center of influence plan. There's 90-day massive action plan. There's just so much content that's part of Premier that you get as a Premier coaching client. And we are adding new stuff. We update it all the time. Yeah, we do. And... um, so it's not a it's not a product that was created a long time ago and just stays the way it is. It's always being updated. But what we're doing now is we're updating the product itself. So Premier Coaching is going is evolving uh, into something that's going to be, I think, organized in a lot easier to consume manner. Because a lot of people join Premier Coaching, mm-hmm. and not everyone obviously has the same level of experience and background sure. or needs, right? Of course. And so if someone's basically joined Premier Coaching and they identify themselves as a new agent, well, then there's going to be a very clear path for new agents. If they join mm-hmm. as a seasoned agent and they want to add staff and build teams and create multiple streams of income through, you know, whatever, we're going to have sources, we're going to have, um, you know, a, sec- a section or sections for that. But reorganizing all of it, oh my gosh. Yes. Who's I, bright, sometimes who, we forget how much there is. Whose bright idea was this, by the way? Mm, your, uh, mm, was it mine? It could have been. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't. It was Trevor's, oh, by the way. Let's throw Trevor in yeah, the bus. Yeah, Trevor, the guy that works for it. Wow, well, I was going to say. It's for, all coming back to roost because he has to organize all of it Yeah, now. exactly. But it is going to be something phenomenal. We're, we're quite, uh, quite proud of it. So if those of you in Premier Coaching, which is... Uh, you know, thousands of you. Make sure that you're logging in. Probably, I'm guessing we're going to have a, a, a relaunch, and I'm probably in the middle of October, mm-hmm. somewhere in there. Uh, but do log in, check it out, and we're also going to be doing a uh, little surprise. Um, I think the best way of explaining it is little surprises that you're going to get once a week as a Premier Coaching member. You're going to get a content, um, a new piece of content or something that we created for you, just for you. It's not on the podcast, just for Premier Coaching members, and you'll be getting that, you know, once a week or once every other week. So it's going to be a lot more interactive, and mm-hmm. we're, yeah. You yeah. can tell where our minds are at because we've been <laughs> deep into the, deep in the analytical weeds. details. Um, yeah. I had, did have some interesting conversations um, as a result of this actual mm-hmm. topic, and it is fascinating how many people this time of year – are receptive Mm -hmm. to thinking bigger. And um, one of the the thoughts I had, I shared with you and I shared with on our podcast, I think really has opened a lot of neuro pathways for a lot Mm -hmm. of people. Uh, The idea that if you're just setting goals that you can easily reverse engineer how to accomplish, that you're not setting goals that are large enough. Mm -hmm. And that very concept, I think, is spawning a lot of big thinking from a lot of our podcast listeners Mm -hmm. who have been methodically for years in some of our coaching clients, they've been increasing their uh, lives, but in a very, you know, increasing their production and increasing the quality of their life. But they've been doing it in a very predictable sort of 
um, you know, systematic way, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. But what people, what they wanted to know, and what people I think are hoping to understand is, okay, so I'm, I can see where I'm going to be this year, next year, the year after that, because I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, you know, this debt's gonna go away, this asset's gonna increase in value, this source of cash flow is gonna improve. So I can kind of plot out where I'm going to be financially into the future. I've been, you know, maybe paying attention to you know, Julie and I for our coaching program. So you're very methodical about making sure you have your magic number of listings and all that. But what happens if you decide you don't just want to plot along from, you know, here to there, to there, to there? What if you want to actually skip maybe a year's worth of predictable growth or two years or three years? Mm -hmm. That's where these big thoughts come from. That, and that's the reason I would suggest to you, if you're setting goals, that you can easily in your main mind reverse engineer. For example, I want to buy a new house. Well, we don't, but let's just say you did. You know, you want to buy a new house and your house now is great. And let's say your house now is 400,000 house you really want 750,000 well if you can go out and find something or you can build something and you can then go you to the mortgage probably broker do it today yeah that's my point is you can easily probably if you found a house today you could go to a mortgage broker you probably have enough equity in your house you, you get what I'm saying easy to reverse engineer but what happens if you set really really large goals that maybe you can't even easily conceive of without really drilling down like for example, it's five years from now. What will you be pining away for? What will your goals be in five years? Why don't you have that be what you set your goals for this year? Fast forward it. Exactly, because you really can skip that amount of time. You can. You don't have to just uh, one step after another for the rest of your life. You can leap forward by a year, two years, three years, all you got to do is plug your mind into realizing uh, that you can have the ability to think five years in advance. So I ask you listeners, just it is a random thought. What is it that you want to be experiencing five years from now? Where do you want to live? What do you want to look like? You know, what, <laughs> how much money do you want to have? How much financial independence and freedom do you want to have? What do you want your relationships to be like? Where do you want to be traveling, looking forward to traveling? Do you want a boat? Do you want a, all that stuff, right? Do you want to have donated a bunch of money or build a wing on a hospital or graduated your kids from Ivy League schools? What is it that five years from now you'll be setting your goals at, you know, for the, you know, say, five years from now, let's say you're 50, you're going to be 55. What are your goals for yourself for when you're 56? Why don't you set those goals now? You yeah, can skip bigger. a step. You know, we have a whole section in Harris Rules about this, but... Um, practicing what I preach, one of the things that I like to do is look at uh, travel and leisure emails that I get because they have the most incredible photos. I was yeah. thinking about, you know, like maybe you've gone to Myrtle Beach for the past six years because that's like your spot. And that's okay if you like that and, you know, you've got your thing. But by looking at something like the travel and leisure site, you see pictures like these incredible pictures. There's a beach in Greece where every stone, they're like these polished uh, step, you know, smaller than stepping stones, but like you have in your garden, polished stones. Every one is a different color. Hmm. There's pink ones, purple ones, green ones, blue ones. It's incredible, and it's all natural. I forget the name of it, but it's in Greece, right? And then the next picture is of these ice fields that are aqua blue and like three stories tall. Well, that's in Iceland. I'd like to see stuff like that, right? We have our favorite places, but expanding your thinking, thinking bigger. One of our, and this is, I'm trying to segue here into our points. Um, so point number six, be okay wanting things. Embrace the wanting of things. We are spiritual beings in a physical manifestation. We need stuff. You need stuff. It might as well be nice stuff. We learned that originally from Deepak Chopra, actually. And I thought it was really fascinating. Someone was asking him a question. He was on a stage and they was asking him a question about materialism. And this person had some, you could tell that they had some agenda. Like people are so materialistic and people, you know, yeah. sort Don't of you have enough? the minimalist perspective that was mm -hmm. rampant back in 2007, 8, and 9. You guys remember that? Oh, yeah. With the advent of Voluntary state. Voluntary simplicity. Voluntary. <laughs> I remember. That's so funny. I'd forgotten that term. Yeah. It's called voluntary simplicity or AKA being poor. Well, the, people definitely don't want to have that ex voluntary. Some, that was that's still a movement. You guys should Google it. But in it, fine if that's what you want to do. That's great. But the reality of it is, is that uh, most of you will have the ability to have, um, I think, wonderfully elegant lives, and maybe you know, having a voluntarily overly simplistic life isn't for you. Well. The next movement, the next move on that is when the guy was asking Deepak Chopra about this, he thought Deepak was going to give him some sort of spiritual answer. And Deepak was very, I think, uh, elegant in his own way of saying exactly what, you know, you just heard from Julie. We're spiritual beings and physical manifestations. As such, we need stuff. We need shoes. We need houses. We need cars. You know, we need this. I need this Diet uh, Coke in front of me, right? <laughs> I need this mic in my hand, right? 
I need this rug that I'm standing on. All the things, you need those things. Maybe need is not the right word. Maybe it's want. But the fact is, is that as a, phys- as a spiritual being in a physical world, you do need things. And why, why not just set your goals to have those things be nice things? You know, you can have a really nice house or you can have a, you know, you can live in a shack someplace. You might as well have as nice of a stuff as you allow yourself to experience. And then on the other side of that is freedom from being uh, essentially overly complicating the, um, a lot of times people, again, try to make you feel guilty about being materialistic. Mm -hmm. Well, get past that because the reality of it is, is if, for example, you're driving Whatever it is, right? A, a Toyota Camry. Am I, I'm st- oh well, okay. You know what? It's so funny. Julie literally wrote that down in her points, and she even said to a uh, Toyota Camry. All right, so Julie, you read. Well, your next I, slide. I wrote, "How nice is your stuff?" You right? know, I, I honestly didn't read that. That's hilarious. I know. We use the same brain. Are you still driving that 2005 Camry with 200,000 miles? That is not a badge of honor. Upgrade all of your stuff. Refer to Harris Rules chapter on specifics. I actually go from a realtor's perspective what you should consider upgrading, right? And remember, those moments of truth that we've referred to before, those are those little snapshots of who you are. You know, if people look at you and judge you in 20 seconds. That's a fact. That's not just for your prospects and clients. It's for you to build confidence and have milestones of accomplishments. It's okay. Do you remember when we were buying the house in Georgetown and we were using one of our coaching clients, Dave, whatever his last name was? And I actually he, had that in my notes and he for a had, while too. You did? Yeah. And he had some, what was, was that freaking Camry? It was a Lexus. Well, it, it was a matter. fancy Camry. It, it was a Toyota, right? Yeah. But it was, it, uh, Toyotas are fine, don't get me wrong. But this thing was a piece of crap. And and he was so, so prideful of the fact that somehow he was able to keep this thing on the road with 3 million miles on it. <laughs> and I'm sitting in this thing, I mean, just disgusted because it was just disgusting. You remember what happened every time you went over a bump in the road? Yeah, the whole thing would like shudder like it was yeah, going to blow apart. Yeah, but the glove box would open up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, it, it, you know, remember, this is a coaching client, a relatively new coaching client. And you can imagine, we, we wrote in that thing once. And then after that, we just follow them with our rental or with We're our. We're like, okay, I'll buy a house. Yeah, exactly. We had no interest in Get being that thing. Here. But then we had a, you know, a coming to, you know, it's not coming to Jesus. It was coming to Dave meeting and asking him, why is he doing that? Why is he driving a piece of crap? What does that tell him? What is he trying to, you know. The whole thing, right? What are you telling the world? What are you telling the yeah. world? You're telling the world that you barely can get by and you're not successful. You're not telling your – there's no positive message that comes from you broadcasting the fact that you can somehow keep some car alive that should have been let go to the car gods thousands of years ago. There's no honor in that. You're just sending a message to the world in sales, right, which is what you guys are, that you're not successful. And, frankly, that you hate your customers because to put a customer in a car like that – you must hate them. That's was those were the things we told him. I know. And what did he do? He got out. He went out. Got a, he went out. Got a new Mercedes. Yes, which is much better. And we rode in that one. Yes. <laughs> so, well, the car, I mean, a car is an obvious example for a real estate professional, right? Yep. Uh, so you have well, to take that seriously. But Julie, this is, we talked about this the other day on the mm-hmm. podcast, and like mm-hmm. every other day, right? Yeah. So most agents will never meet their customers at any place other than Starbucks and houses, sure. or their house, or the customer's house, right? Yep. Mo- nobody goes to an office anymore. Mm-hmm. As co- now that COVID's basically the you know nobody's ever going Some to go. Some of you aren't allowed to go to your offices right now. And nobody's ever going to go to a real estate office again. It, the preferred method of communicating with any real estate person is never to be at the real estate person's office. That is the way it's always been. But now the period is finally at yes. the other end of that Especially sentence. Now. So when you're trying to make an impression on the marketplace, it comes down to the moments of truth. It comes down to how you look. It comes down to how you answer the phone, whether you answer the phone, what you say, how you say it. It comes down to all those little details that some of you just take for granted. Um, and one of the, you know, again, this isn't Harris Rules, our book. It's available at Barnes & Noble. It's available everywhere, basically, obviously on Amazon. Get the book, read the chapter, because Julie does a great job of going through, of explaining why you always want to look and dress a, maybe a notch above not just your competitors, but your your, your marketplace, prospects. right? Mm-hmm. You want to be broadcasting the message that you're successful. You care about what you look like. But also there's a old school thought that if you show up at somebody's house or in a sales environment and you didn't uh, go to the effort of making yourself look nice, you are actually disrespecting that customer because you made no effort. It's like, you know, um, going to church, right? It used to be when I was a kid, you go to church, you always dress up nice. And when Julie and I were in Texas and whatnot, we occasionally go to church and people were wearing like beach clothes. And you know what? We didn't go back to that church 
because there's certain environments where you want to always look nice. Be respectful. It'd be respectful. And that's how you look and how you present yourself and whether or not your car has, you know, basically is on death's doorstep. And Seriously. you think that's a, that's not at the moment of truth that you want to actually be broadcasting. Right. Like if you've got an iPhone six with a busted case and you're calling yourself a real estate professional, when you know that your cell phone is one of your most important tools that you use all day long, you probably should consider upgrading that. So in the book, we go through lots of different moments of truth. You know, your sign, your, you know, I, and it's so funny because agents will say, well, the market's so high. Well, I'm not even going to use a sign. Oh, goodness. Don't even get me started. It's you, not about that. Yeah, well, I mean, we could ramp on that forever. Home but brochures, the, re- the right, whole thing. The whole thing. Everything, you guys, just, this is get all the book. Stuff. Get the book, but also our coaching program. But really where we're going with all this is that some of you, once you've moved past, and it's not a difficult thing to move past, the idea of wanting stuff and the stuff you want might as well be really nice. On the other side of that is how are you going to pay for it? And the other, and the only answer for that is you're going to have to be somebody that has earned the right to, uh, you know, essentially be of service to other people. Mm-hmm. Just because you want to doesn't mean you get to. You actually have to have the skill set that they're willing to pay for. And the skill set is not something you can fake. The skill set is something that, uh, is, is something you learn. But you again, remember we were talking earlier about how you can not just set the next natural goal, like I'm gonna, you know, essentially I'm gonna buy a new pair of shoes. Well, that'll take you five seconds on Amazon, right? But how about when you're coming to your progression in your career, you don't have to wait to become a listing agent. You don't have to wait to become somebody that's very powerful in your marketplace. That's the whole damn point of coaching. It's to not wait, to skip ahead of the line, to learn what you would have otherwise hopefully learned over a lot of trial and error over years. When you join our coaching program, you can essentially have all that laid out in front of you so you have a very clear path to follow. That's the whole point of coaching. Remember, Julie and I, in our first year, when we were basically in our early 20s, we sold over 100 homes. You know how we did it? Because people always ask us, Mm -hmm. how do you think we did it? Exactly the way we coach you guys to do it with obviously some enhancements to, you know, reflect the modern, um, you know, social networking and whatnot. Right, exactly. But the reality of it is, is what we teach you to do is what we did do, which thousands of other agents have done. And it's a, you know, the coaching program gets you the results that you want. All price ranges, it's proven to work in all market conditions, whether the market's going up or down, it does not matter. New construction, resale, this is a proven real estate system. If you guys want to learn more about it, which I'm sure most of you do, this is the time of year where we generally speaking, we have mo- uh, you know thousands of agents will enroll between say you know now October 1st, let's say, and and maybe the end of uh, April. Well, not even April really. Sometimes it's like the end of March. This is their biggest because a lot of agents are saying I had my butt handed to me during the market or during the past year. I want to set bigger goals. I'm I'm feeling motivated and I don't know what to do. That's the reason they join the coaching program. So there's two ways you guys can join, and the easiest way is for you just to go to the website, timandjulieharris.com, click on coaching, click on premier coaching and join. Um, if you want to talk to somebody first, that's of course available to you. You can talk to one of our new member coaches. Just text the word success to 47372. Text the word success to 47372 and you'll learn, uh, you know, what talking with our new member coaches about the premier coaching program and decide which path is appropriate for you. But don't delay on this, guys. This is the time of year to get your learning done. That way, when the new year rolls in, you're going to start earning. So this is the learning time. Do Get your learning done now. Get your listing presentation done. Get your lead generation done. That way, when the calendar flips over, you've already got the momentum that you rumble. need. Exactly. That's how yeah. you win in this business. This fourth quarter is the most important quarter absolutely positively mm-hmm. in all markets, all market conditions, right? Work first uh, work in fourth quarter. So when first quarter rolls around, it's not about rebuilding your business. It's about actually starting to, you know, benefit from the, uh, the, the sales that you've created for yourself. And it's easier to create more sales when you have sales, right? You're not having to worry about where your next paycheck is coming from. Focus now, drill down now, get the benefits of it in the next, you know, really three to six months. Well, the other common thing that we hear with new coaching clients, especially this time of year, and after a year like this is that a lot of you guys did really well this year, but their request is, I, you know, I kicked butt this year, but man, it was a hard year. I want to do the same thing next year or maybe a little bit more, but I want to find ways to systematize myself yep. so that it's not so stressful to do that kind of volume. You know, things like some of these guys have never handled multiple listings at the same time, you know? 
And so how do you handle that? How do you handle those conversations, those scripts, that schedule, talking to them so that they're not haunting you at 3 o'clock in the morning? Speaking of which, we're working on – by the way, so join Coach Premier Coaching. Just text the word SUCCESS to 47372 or just go over to timandjulieharris.com, click on Coach and click on Premier. We are working on a new outline for mm-hmm. – tricks to getting buyer's offers accepted. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, we start. you started on that, right? Mm-hmm. I sent you some notes for that? Yes. Okay. So we're going to have that hopefully next week or whatnot? Possibly. Oh, and another announcement too. <laughs> we and we're going to get to our next on. point. Yeah, we do. Um, next week on Thursday, is it? We're going to be speaking at a C5 event mm-hmm. in Miami. Um, and we're going to be there with um, Michael Valdez, who's an executive from EXP Realty. He's mm-hmm. in charge of EXP Realty International. Yep. And it's a, a, the Montiel organization is putting mm-hmm. on. And Julie and I are going to be there. So if you guys want to attend, I don't know, honestly. It's the Marriott if, Miami Airport. Yeah. So there, there may or may not be any tickets left. It's not our event. Um, we're just flying in to participate. Uh, but we're going to be in Miami next. It's Thursday, right? It's Thursday the 7th. The 7th. Okay. And so if you want to meet us there, we'd love to see you. And uh, hopefully there's tickets left. And if there's not, um, we can still probably just meet in the hallway or whatnot. It is an, um, probably 90% Hispanic event. As far as the, you know, they're going to be speaking Spanish primarily, but still it's a great event to go to. And, and while we're there and for the hour or so that we're on stage, I think it'll be mostly English because otherwise we're not going to be on stage <laughs> for more. Be a quick we're we're going to be up there for like 15 seconds if they ask to exactly. try to talk to us in Spanish. That's right. But yeah, there you go. And there's going to be a lot more events and stuff that Julie and I are going to be doing into uh, the new year. We're going to be announcing all of those over the next um, few months, but we're probably doing between six and 10 live events in 2022 that Julie and I will be at. And we, you know, definitely would love to meet as many as you as possible. That's always one of the highlights mm-hmm. of all of our trips. Yes, all indeed. right. So next point, Julie. Okay. And you'll have to let me know when we're timing out here, but okay. So point number seven, use stuff. We've been talking a lot about stuff and upgrading your stuff as your propellant to go to the next level, but know that eventually what you'll long for is freedom. The ability to choose to do what you want to do when you want to do it at the highest level versus always having to do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level and balancing that out. And at a certain point, that scale tips in your favor, but only when you have repetitively done what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at at the highest level. That's important. That's the skills part of it. Eventually, when you have done enough of that, then the scale tips back to your side and you can have more days off. You can have more but vacations. That is the definition you can do more of rich, stuff that you want to do. Right? Yes, That's the is. definition of rich. Rich right. is where your money works for you and you no longer have to work for your money. And from that comes what Jules just said. It, it essentially, you then determine who, you know, it's basically, I'll tell you guys a funny video. You can find this on, um, I, I've mentioned this before, but I love the video. What Jerry Seinfeld. Oh. Okay, he's <laughs> he's driving his 1973 Porsche 911 RSR. Warning, don't wor- we're wandering into car world. Yeah, don't worry, I won't stay there long. And there's a videotape of someone, uh, you know, someone who's videotaping him parallel parking this thing. There's only 19 of these things in the world. So, I mean, think about that. Some guy who sees this really rare Porsche and he sees this really famous person, all, you know, same person, same, you know, the whole car, the whole, okay, the phone comes out, the videotape. At the video cameras on and um, the uh, so he parallel parks and then you can see Jerry getting out of the Porsche you know and then he walks across the street it's a two-lane split road and then he you, he's off camera but you can assume he's just going in to get a cup of coffee or whatever so the guy's still videotaping from a good bit away this Porsche and you know it's whatever the guy obviously loves the car and then all of a sudden you see this I think it was a Camry <laughs> okay. Of course. Yeah, it was brown, probably. Yeah. This Camry pulls in in this empty uh, spot that was in front of it, and she parallel parks backwards horribly, so much so that she pulls her back for Camry into the front of this Porsche. Now, this Porsche was not just rare, but this Porsche had something like 2,500 miles on it from new. So it was not just rare, it was a unicorn, one of one that it doesn't Vintage, exist. Vintage, original, amazing, the whole thing. Exactly. It never has actually been had any paint work. It's basically still bubble wrap from the new, you know, all that. So she then pulls her Camry into the front of this Porsche. And remember, the guy with the camera phone that's at least across the street, it's not going to be very good mic, but you can hear this poor Porsche crying out in pain as she slowly pulls her Camry and smashes the front of this. And it was it was just a sl- the slowest, slowest of accents, yeah. but the anguish from this poor old Porsche was just, uh, okay. It, so, it might have been her parking technique. Have you ever seen people do that? 
Like, that's how they actually know they're close enough to the spot is they have to bump the other car. Yeah. Well, no, she wanted to bump it, and then she wanted to basically smash it. Keep going. So Jerry then, of course, comes back. The guy's videotaping this whole thing happening. Then all of a sudden, Jerry Seinfeld pops back into the screen and then goes up, What are you doing? (laughs) You're driving into my car. And she's and she's and this lady who doesn't get out of her car rolls her window down and says, "Oh, I didn't see it. There was no car there. You just parked it there." You could hear her oh lying arguing with and someone. arguing him that she didn't do what he just saw her do, and oh. and you know the whole thing. This was going on and on, and she kept so arguing bad. with him. She was just like, "Oh, it's not my fault." You could hear all this going mm-hmm. on, and he's like, "What are you talking about, lady? How can it not be your fault?" And then he, he just you could tell it, this light bulb went off in his head. He just all of a sudden, now you guys think I'm going to say he smacked her, punched her, shot her. Nope. He put his hands up in the air, looked down at her and said, I no longer want you in my life. And walks away, right? And, and, and then, she, then she pulls out. He gets back in his Porsche and he drives away. The Porsche had a little bit of a frown, but, you know, it since got fixed. But the moral of the story was is he didn't collect insurance information. He didn't sit there and do what a normal person would do. He had enough money, had enough sense of how much time he wanted to spend with this lady. It was obviously a little bit on the idiot scale. And he just drove off because he had the financial freedom that only comes from being rich. Yes. So it comes back to, and hopefully you enjoyed my story, and my Jerry Seinfeld invitation. Which was very good. Which was pretty good. Best, yeah. Right. So he drove off. And uh, that that is from him's ability to essentially have enough money coming in that whatever damage was done to the car, he can fix. And he put more value on the psychological damage that dealing with this woman would cause him. Right. It just wasn't worth it to him. Yes. And, and I have heard other people uh, say that that's the ultimate benefit from having enough money is you can, as Julie just said, you can choose to uh, – you know, essentially spend your time with the people you want to spend your time with. Mm -hmm. Anybody you don't want to be around, you don't have to be around them. Where in normal life, you have to suffer the pains and anguish of having to be around a lot of people you choose not to had given a choice to spend time with them. So it all comes, it goes from long periods of time of doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level, which means you have to put up with Brown Camry lady to Mm -hmm. getting to the point where you do what you want to do when you want to do it at whatever the heck level you choose to do it. That only comes from financial financial freedom. Yes, and you don't have to be as wealthy as Seinfeld to find that. It's just, you know, it, this was his version of it with his very expensive Porsche and his lifestyle and all that. I, I like that story also because, and we've done podcasts on this too, that's a good demonstration of you you can't always control your first reaction, right. but you can control what you do after that. And to see him transform from freaking out as, well, he should have, she was bashing into his car, to, wait a minute, I can fully afford to take care of this on my own. I do not even have to give this woman another second of my time. Bye bye. Exactly. You know, so I I always like seeing those transformations of you know seeing on somebody's face that realization. But that comes that's that sense of freedom that he had, that little epiphany, that spark that got him out of that environment. Yeah. You know, that's what comes from as we've been hopefully drilling down. You guys are getting from being rich. I mean, in essence, that comes from where your money works for you. You no longer work for your money. And you don't need to be a billionaire, as Seinfeld is rumored to be. Mm -hmm. You can be somebody who has got enough cash flow coming in from various sources of income, from various, you know, income generating buckets that you are in that sense. It's like, for example, Julie, our definition of rich is where your money works for you and you no longer have to work for your money. So I had a call the other day with somebody who has to basically earn between sixteen and twenty thousand dollars a year to pay his personal overhead. Is uh, a month? A month, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, personal overhead, taxes, um, you know, trips to wherever they're going to go. A nice lifestyle for him and his family in this particular area of the country was going to cost you know roughly two hundred thousand dollars a year. So um, we figured out how much, and he doesn't. He wanted to figure out a way to make that money passively. Not transactionally. In other words, it wasn't based on the hours he put in and then he's getting paid for his time. Or it's not put in from the transaction that sold and now he's getting paid for having gotten the listing in his time, right? Not transactional sources of income. So we wanted to, we worked out a plan for him to create actual, genuine, passive sources of income. And once you get that realization that you can create passive sources of income for yourself, that are, and that income is not predicated on whether you did or didn't do anything today, yesterday, or maybe not even tomorrow, it's just passive income, that's on the other side. That's when you're financially free. And all of you, maybe 16000 is nothing to you. And that would even scratch, if you're in New York City, you need to earn fifty or 100000 a month. Or maybe you're in Columbus, Ohio, where Julie and I are from, and you only need to earn $8,000 a month and have a great lifestyle. Shouldn't your mission ultimately be 
to create enough passive income so you can be financially free so that you don't have to work for your money anymore or your money's working for you. If you're looking for a North Star, isn't that a pretty damn good one? I would think. Something to work on. There's their homework. <laughs> and well, that, I mean, that's some, definitely something to think about. Yeah. But yeah, I'll tell you the quickest, and, and I apologize ahead of time for some of you guys who have tender ears when we talk about eXp Realty, but in our 20 plus years of being in the real estate industry, we've never seen anything that can create so much passive income for agents that's not transactionally based so quick. It's extraordinary. Yes, and honestly, if we didn't talk about it, we would be so far out of integrity as people who every single day talk to you about the fact that your product is profit right. and that we do want you to be making more money more easily, you know, keep, keeping more of it in your pocket with less stress to you. If we knew about this and we didn't talk about it, I, I, I wouldn't listen to us. Yeah. I, well, I mean, honestly, it does, out of if, if you're listening to this podcast, Mm-hmm. And, and the, you know, I'm out there, you know, Columbus, Ohio, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you and I are getting into real estate and I stumble across this podcast. Yeah. And and they're, and the pre, the Tim and Julie that I'm listening to on the podcast mm-hmm. aren't talking about eXp Realty. Yeah. And I find out about eXp Realty and they haven't mentioned it to me. Yep. I'm actually not going to yeah, trust them. Exactly. Because if they say that they're in, the, uh, essentially their mission, professional mission in life is to be a service to agents. Mm-hmm. And they, they preach these very tactical and practical things. Yeah. And they, and these, uh, these real estate gurus gurus that I'm listening to on this podcast aren't telling me to at yeah. least take a hard look at eXp Realty when it's so yeah, obviously that, right? the smart move for every mm-hmm. agent, sure. then that is something that that's a disconnect that makes no sense. Totally agree. Yeah. And that's ultimately the reason why we did align with eXp Realty. Uh, didn't mean to talk about it for those of you with tender ears. Just, you know, I get it. Some of you I, don't. You, I mean, you should at least be curious about it. Even exactly. Even if you're having a little mini reaction to it. Exactly. And here's, we made it easy for you just to get some basic information. If you are eXp curious, which all of you should be. Text the letters or text the you know three letters EXP to four seven three seven two. Text EXP to four seven three seven two. Again, text EXP to four seven three seven two, and we'll text you back back a link, and then you can watch some videos, and you can get started and learn more about what we're doing at EXP. If you've already decided you're going to join EXP and you're looking for a sponsor that's going to be rabid in your success in your pursuit of success. Please do consider Julie and I. We are formally applying for the job of being your sponsor at eXp, being your partner at eXp Realty. And if you'd like to move forward with us today, just text me directly at 512-758-0206, 512-758-0206. And Julie or myself will call you back and we will get you started with eXp Realty. Are we done with these points for today? For today, I think. I have to check over here. But yes, so you guys have some pretty specific homework about thinking bigger. So what does that mean to you? We talked about your stuff, upgrading your stuff. We talked about the fact that if you can easily figure out what you're calling a goal, maybe that becomes a stepping stone to a bigger goal after you've thought bigger about it. You know, those mini goals are almost like um, your to-do list items if they're too small, right? When you know how to do it. So thinking bigger. One of our future points is to take what you think you want and try and multiply it by a factor. Maybe well, that's by we have five. Three, Maybe we have that's three, by ten. Yeah, we have three great points tomorrow. But you just said something, and I, I think that's the thought we should leave them with. Mm-hmm. If your goals are not big enough, they're not going to motivate you, and you're not going to accomplish them. If you're just taking, if you're taking the easy path to setting goals, and it's just basically about the next natural step. Chances are you're not even going to really do those things because th- your goals have to really excite you. I'll even go beyond the word excite. Your goals have to intimidate you. Yes, they have to make you scared. They have to make you nervous. You need to set goals that are so audacious. You don't even want to say it out loud, yeah. let it alone write it on a piece of paper. You're, you're giving me flashbacks. Like I was remembering writing the book. Yeah. That is a really big intimidating goal. That it, different than, you know, we've written several books. The The first one, you do an, an ebook. You can kind of self-publish. It's okay. You don't have all that pressure. But when you work with a real publisher and you have real editors on you all the time, you know, that's something that I couldn't – say, okay, these are the following steps. I needed that guidance, but that was pretty intimidating. Yeah. I'm glad I did it though. I'm a better writer for it. I know how to lay things out a lot better. You know, so it's it's that thing. I I mean there's so many different examples from, you know, we have coaching clients that you've got coaching clients that's an ex fight I don't know if you're ever an ex fighter pilot, but a retired fired yeah. well, fighter pilot. He doesn't do not, it anymore, yeah, I he guess. Do it. Yeah, he doesn't have you one know. in his garage. Well, so that, to me, that sounds kind of like an intimidating thing to learn, but I'm sure that he learned a whole lot of things along that path. Well, but it's nice so, to you bring us an example, yeah. though. Um, you know, he, so the same guy, he, mm-hmm. he went to Yale undergraduate. He went to yeah. Harvard graduate. 
I can he, tell he's not very motivated. No, exactly. <laughs> but then he was also a uh, Marine fighter pilot. He flew F. 15s, the single seaters, I think I got it right, mm-hmm. um, and for the Marines. And yeah. so the, he and I used to talk about some of the things that Julie and I were getting to do him to do as far as a coaching client. And he'd always tell me how that related to something he learned mm-hmm. specifically when he was learning to be a pilot, like to follow the checklist. And this is what you do. You don't don't worry so much about why you're doing what you're doing Just next. Just do it. Just do it. And you'll figure it out along the way. Right. Your brain, your the, the way you live when you're in a fighter pilot when you're a fighter pilot and things go wrong is you don't want to have to think. It just comes to you intuitively. Yes. But that doesn't come to you unless you've actually done the work so that, you know, you when studied it, you've you trust studied it. it, you know, you're following a system. Right. And somehow people intuitively, you know, that's true, right? If you wanted to learn how to play golf or swim, you're going to go and hire the best coach, best trainer that you possibly can. And you're going to, you're going to be very picky about who you hire to do that. They're going to have to have done it at a high level themselves. They're going to have to, you know, like when you're hiring a real estate coach, Julie and I, or considering hiring a coach, we suggest you run uh, your prospective real estate coach through several filters. Filter one is have they sold real estate before? If no, then they don't qualify. Filter two, has I, have they sold it? If they've sold real estate, go on to uh, filter two. Have they sold at least 100 houses in a year? Um, if no, then they're not qualified. But if yes, move to question three. Have they actually sold over 100 houses per year for at least five years in a row? If no, then they don't qualify. You can do better. Uh, and then if yes, you found the one in a billion real estate coaches that actually uh, performed at a high level consistently for a long period of time. In the fight, it's over 100 years, uh, 100 homes a year. And I didn't add the extra little details. It can't be new construction. It couldn't just be the list of building in Manhattan resale, right? And then the fourth filter is how they actually performed over 10,000 paid one-on-one coaching calls. And when you ask those, that's the level of qualification that you need to require from anybody before you actually, they might call themselves a real estate coach, but if they don't check all four of those boxes, they are a fake real estate coach. They do not qualify. You can do better. If you had to go and hire a coach right now to teach you how to be a fire pilot, are you going to choose a guy that's... Uh, Learn it on YouTube. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right? I mean, doesn't it just make sense? And yet when you guys are deciding who you're going to buy information from about building your business, you don't really go through any effort to pre-qualify well, some them. Some of them, their only filter is free. Yeah. Or, or Google. Or Google, right. You know, Or uh, I'm going to survey my friends on Facebook. Yeah. These, these are not good filters. You'd never do that with anything else. But isn't that strange, I, I, though? You know what it is? I have a theory about this. It's because, you know, like back to your fighter pilot. If he learned how to – I don't even think you could even do that. But let's say he learned how to fly from somebody that, you know, read a couple books and learned it on YouTube. It, there's more danger involved. Like a surgeon can have somebody die if they skip steps, right? A pilot, same thing. Even learning to drive a car, you're more careful about that. It's because in real estate, you can make more mistakes more frequently before sometimes it catches up to you, and it's not life and death. Well, but Jilly, you know? it is life and death, I think. Yeah. Because the reality of it is, is most of you listening, when you're, especially the new ones out there, you're not going to be in this business in 24 months. Well, it's life months. and death for their income. It, well, it's life and death for – but it's not – It's ultimately what, you know, you and I talk about this. The problem that you guys are going to be facing is if you choose the wrong path and you stay on the wrong path for too long, chances of you uh, staying in this business for two years, let alone five, is basically zero. And then what happens is after you fail out of the business, you're going to be carrying around that Damocles sword or that sort of dark cloud of having failed. And you're going to then never probably really try to do anything again. You're probably never really going to try again. You're going to have to – all this crap and cycle mm-hmm. – not to mention the fact that you've been buying leads and branding Mickey Mouse from you know somebody and now you owe a whole bunch of money on your credit card. You see what happens when you make the wrong decision? It not only doesn't work, but it doesn't work and then it kicks you in the butt on your way out. Yeah, and it can affect other things going forward in your life. So and- we try really hard to save you from that. You just have to listen. trust and listen. Right. And, you know, we this is not our first rodeo. So. Yeah, we do get criticized for basically being critical. But you know what? We don't care. Because the reality of it is, at this point in our career, uh, we are only beholden to you. And we're not beholden to anybody else. And we definitely will not suffer fools when it comes to you guys. Uh, you know, somebody comes to you and somebody produces some product. Or they're trying to sell you buyer leads or branding or all those, anything, all those other types of things that agents gravitate towards because they think it's the shiny objects, the easy button. Julie and I are going to talk about that on a podcast, explain to you why that stuff is probably not ever going to work and probably never has worked. 
And then you're going to have to make your decision as to whether or not you actually want to follow that path. After you have a balanced perspective, you've heard their perspective on why it'll work. You heard our perspective on why it probably won't work. And if you choose to still do it, at least at that point, you have a, you know, basically you've done some and homework. educated you know, mindset and opposed to guessing or, you know, relying at people who don't really have any business coaching you. So on that note, I hope that you guys do something with all these points we've been giving you and that you start to think bigger. It's easy to get started with that. You know, you can go to the real estate treasure map or Harris rules. Well, have them text, text the word success to 47372. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's the easy button. If you want to talk to Julie and I more about um, joining us at EXP, and you're ready to go, you can just text me directly at 512-758-0206. If you want more information on eXp and you're just eXp curious, text the letters eXp to 47372. In the meantime, thank you for continuing to make this number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. We're being downloaded um, in over 60 different countries. This podcast, and this is kind of amazing, has been downloaded over 20 million times. Now, what's really incredible about that is that many of you listen to us every single day. Um, and there's there's something like 1.3 million agents in the United States, members of National Association of Realtors. might be 1.5 million. So for us to have been downloaded over 20 million uh, times really does give, I think, a lot of credence to the fact that many of you are looking for the right way right now on how to build your real estate business. And we certainly appreciate the opportunity uh, to be part of that journey. If you guys need us for anything, have any suggestions on podcast topics or ideas, please feel free to text me. Do not call. I will not answer. Text me at 512-758-0206. In the meantime, you guys have a fantastic day, and we'll talk with you on the show tomorrow.